Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Cassie West here and David, David my husband. husband. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we wanted to make a video about why we don't vote and do not feel bad about it at all. Like not one little bitty speck. So not one bit. Yeah, I did. I didn't vote yesterday. I didn't even care to. And Oregon has mail-in ballots. I just don't care. The productive things that I did yesterday was I went out and I test rode some mountain bikes. And, uh, to get an exercise, making society a healthier place. Right, right. And I bought a new handgun. I bought a uh, Rock Island um, Baby Rock. This is my new carry piece. It's a little small 380 1911. And then once I get a once I get a nine millimeter 1911, a Springfield EMP, I'll have the full spectrum from full size, mid, tiny. It'll be great. The the point being is that whoever you vote for, yes, even if it's the lesser of two evils, you are essentially responsible for what they do. So a lot of people will say, oh, you didn't vote, you don't have the right to complain. But you're the one that put this person in power. When you're not voting, you're just completely like, no, I, I don't consent to any of this. I, I never signed the social contract. I don't agree to your system. I don't like any of you. I won't support any of you. Now, if there is someone that you can wholeheartedly support, and you feel like won't be a bad person, I don't think it's wrong to vote for them. Like if Ron Paul was was running for president, I would absolutely vote for him and support him. Um, I, and these standards aren't really that high, so the fact that no one can meet these is, is insane. It, it just shows how evil it's gotten because people give voting legitimacy. It's because of voting that it's gotten this bad. It's because people still show up and support these people even though they are absolutely terrible. Instead of saying enough is enough, we need more options, we have to either have, you know, more political parties running, we have to have, you know, more more options, but this is not okay. We're not doing it. Like, don't be a scumbag. Don't have, like, rapes in your past. You know, don't have a bunch of, uh, like, highly publicized affairs. Um, don't support violating people. Don't support stealing people's money. And don't support killing people or bombing other countries or putting nonviolent people into jail because they put something in their body that you don't like. You know, you say, you say that's not, like, a lot to ask. But the thing is, it is a lot to ask of the kind of garbage human beings that float to the top right, of society. Right, because this attracts the <laughs> worst humanly possible people. Yeah. The, the absolute worst people. Scum of the earth. The scum of the earth. So you're, you're literally lifting up the scum of the earth whenever like, you vote. Yeah. These are... Politicians are scum of the earth. Just like, you know, if you went to the... Like, if you just went to, like, a den of, of uh, you know, free market criminals... <laughs> um, versus versus publicly subsidized criminals like the state is like they're they're just as disgusting the only difference is that politicians are just scumbags that are i don't want to say smart but that have like some people skills and have like some um some money uh and are, and are it's, i mean they're, kind they're of more, smart they're properly more, socialized like these yeah. are people that they're that, accomplished yeah they're actually accomplished yeah accomplished pieces of crap they're, they're just the most <laughs> yeah. accomplished vermin society has to offer. I, I have the belief that if you vote for someone and you're the one that supports them and you're the one that helped put them into a position of power, then whatever they do, that blood is on your hands too. So, you know, all the, all the bombs that are dropped, all the money that's taken, all, all the stuff that happens under a corrupt administration, even if it's a, even if it's a better one, then the alternative is still something that you're validating with your vote. So essentially up until my early mid-ish 20s, I thought that voting was, you know, a societal duty and that's what you need to do and all this other stuff. Um, and I, I, my degree was in political science, so I worked in politics for several years and I was working for a Republican campaign uh, when I was like 22 or 20, no, 21, and um, I was trying to get this guy to register to vote, and he kept, he was like, oh no, I I won't vote. And I was like, well, if you don't vote, then Barack Obama's gonna win. Do you like Barack Obama? And he was like... Well, now we know why Obama won. This guy didn't vote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and he was like, 
no, I don't like Obama. I don't want to be perpetuating a corrupt system where I'm being forced to choose between two unappealing options and acting like that's a valid choice and giving it the legitimacy of my vote. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but then I just like put it out of my head and kept going because I had a job to do. I had to hurry up. And... So I, I didn't really think much of it again um, until a few months later. And I was like, really? You're not doing anything by voting for the lesser of two evils. But I've almost swung to an even more politically nihilistic viewpoint. And I'm not a nihilist at mm -hmm. all, but I am a political nihilist. I think they're mm -hmm. all just so evil. Everything is so corrupt. Nothing good is basically ever going to get accomplished. And I've gone from, like, I don't even want to legitimize the state to, like, dude, even if I cared about legitimizing the state, your vote does nothing. And people are always like, well, you know, but, but you don't want so-and-so to win. And it's like, well, you know, for example, we had a Republican governor with a, a better shot than normal this year of winning in Oregon. I didn't like the guy. And, and we live in Oregon, so we have one of the most progressive governors in the yeah, United States. She's, she's, she's a nightmare. She's awful. So she is them. evil to the core. But, so it's not like we support her. Yeah, and it, but, right, right, exactly. And I don't, I don't like the Republican guy, mm -mm. but I'll admit I would have laughed if Kate Brown. I would have been, I would have been pretty happy if he had. But, won. but the thing is, is that like he still, even though he had a good chance, he still lost by like five or six percent of the vote. Yeah. And what, what really? No, got, it was like ten percent. It was more than I even thought it would be. It was, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a chunk. Anyway, my vote mm -hmm. would not have meant anything. Um, so. The thing that really got me was people are like, yeah, but why don't you vote? Why don't at least try to make a chance? Try to make a change. And I'm like, because honestly, I won't ever make a change here. Not through this kind of stuff. Right. You know, I, I think there's ways to make changes in the legal system. They usually come from like activist yeah, lawyering and court civil, cases. Yeah, court cases, and civil stuff. disobedience. Yeah, um, uh, people challenging so people challenging the state or or, or challenging their their arrests. So so here's here's what gets me. Oregon had a uh, ballot initiative, whatever it's called, this year, which would have banned all future mm. taxes on groceries. If you don't live in Oregon, you may not realize this, but we don't have a sales tax, and it's awesome, but occasionally places like stupid liberal places like Ashland, and so there are little municipalities that will try to pass their own taxes, and this, this law would have banned them from making taxes on groceries, which you'd think everyone would think was great. No. The initiative to ban taxes on groceries failed because 65% of Oregonians are okay with groceries being taxed. So that, that's, that's like or, why I don't vote because I'm like 65% of the people in my state are okay with taxing to tax groceries. groceries. You know, there was a measure that would have restricted abortion a little bit, which is something I actually care about, mm -hmm. but it was never going to pass. Like it, it, it failed by a fairly wide margin. Why, why would I have wasted my time. You know, the, the only way that you can make a difference with voting is if you're really out there drumming up support for it. Like, I get it. If you can sway them far enough one direction, yeah, you can change things. But let's, let's move on to the next kind of point here. Voting is so obnoxious to me, and I, so I, I don't really tweet, but I do use Twitter a mm -hmm. fair bit to follow people in the film industry. Uh, I'm a filmmaker, for those of you that don't know. So it's useful, it's at times inspiring. I glean a lot of useful information, writing tips. Unfortunately, it's also meant that the last couple weeks, since I pretty much only follow filmmakers and mm -hmm. film-adjacent people, my feed has been nothing but liberals being like, vote, 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 and it's so annoying. And it is so abundantly clear to me that voting is a sacrament of the statist religion. Just like us as Christians, practice, you know, baptism and communion. Yeah. These people practice voting. And it's, it's hilarious to me because, like, I get it if someone's trying to vote because they want to change something. I think it's stupid, but, like, I get it. Mm -hmm. These people act like voting in and of itself is a virtue. Yeah, they're, they're like, what, whatever your position, go vote. It's like, no, yeah, that's no, what gets me. no. Not <laughs> whatever your position. If you want to vote for something absolutely idiotic, why don't you stay home? They act like it's this beautiful, civic... Duty. Like, a great um, uh, meme today that was like something like, um, oh, imagine if the soldiers on the battlefield were so happy 
that they died because you could, like, vote to kill babies. I thought you were going to wax poetic about that's That's actually a funny twist. I thought it was going to be, like, the conservatives. They're like, these people died so you can have the right to vote. Or really, it's usually liberals that do that. Yeah. Liberals who will be, like, ostensibly anti-war, but then when it comes to voting, they're like, these soldiers protecting the magnificent institutions of the state. The funniest, like, uh little meme of the day that I saw was it was showing people, it was showing a bunch of Catholics in line on Ash Wednesday getting their little ashy stupid thing on their forehead. Mm -hmm. Only instead of getting ash on their forehead, you could see the priest was doing it, but there was a little I voted thing on there. Yeah. It was so perfect because I was like, yeah, this is a sacrament of mm -hmm. the state. The sacrament of the statist religion. And I feel like voting is just not the most effective way to make change. It, it would be effective if it's to a point where through change we're able to have people that are the two options that are, or the four options or whatever, that are actually um, appealing, then yeah, voting would be fine. But until then, it's, it's not even effective. Like, there are so many more ways that you can be effective. David was more effective by buying a gun on Tuesday to support the Second Amendment and his right to uh, protect his own family so that we don't have to rely on, um, you know, public services. Mm. Um, I was more effective by homeschooling my children that day, uh, you know, instead of sending them off to get taught by the state. Like... You're, you're more effective going to church on Sunday. You're more effective going and eating dinner as a family. Like, like these are things that change society. These are things that change cultures. These are things that change, like, how people think. Because this is not a political battle. Things don't get changed through political battles. They get changed through knowledge and truth and culture and spirit. So they get changed through spiritual battles, cultural battles, um, and just just bringing up better people, being a, a better person yourself as an individual. That's what changes things. I mean, even as far as working within the system goes, there's a million more effective ways than... Besides voting, you're, you, will, you will accomplish more if uh, you know you go out and sue the local police department for when they violate your rights, like that kind of thing, will have more of a positive impact on, on society. your society, on your on your and than, your local community than voting for you know whoever for sheriff. I think I think that the most important thing that we can do is we can work to change people's minds and work towards getting more. And we're never going to ha have probably make much headway in this. But mm -hmm. We can if, at least for the people whose minds we change, we've made a big impact working on getting people to have some kind of a consistent worldview because nobody does. Yeah. That's why you get all people these... People don't... Right, that's why you get all they, these people... They literally don't have a worldview. No, they, they don't. They don't. They just they just support things because they're told to or because... Uh, well, I guess no matter what they're told to. They're either told to by their emotions or they're told to by, mm -hmm. you know, celebrities and, mm -hmm. and politicians and stuff. But that's why you get... The lack of a consistent worldview is why you get conservatives who are pro-life who are war cheerleaders mm -hmm. or pro-choice people who are anything but when you want to have a gun or you know start a business yeah or then you don't want to bake choice. a cake yeah or right, yeah. instead it, of having a consistent view of do not violate other people it's just if it's something that seems right to me a a fetus that is genetically distinct from the mother is, as far as they're concerned, part of the mother's body. But a guy who's spent the last 30 years building up his cake business, he has no right to do with what he wants with his premises. <laughs> so retarded. Yeah, and if you have a bikini wax at your salon, you better wax male genitals. If the person is chan is trans or whatever, is that I, a real thing? No, that's a real <laughs> thing. I, it, th these things sound like a joke, but that is rape. I mean, it will get to the point where even the brothels in like N Nevada are going to be Nevada. told that, oh, you can't say no if 
a gay person or a trans person or someone of any race wants to have sex with you. Like, this, it will get to a point where the state is forcing these people to have sex with people. Uh, that's about it for me as far as, like, why I don't vote and how I feel about it. Like, I, I, feel, I feel fantastic that I didn't vote yesterday. I feel wonderful. I don't feel bad at all. Really, really do. Not one little bit. So Very stop cute. trying to, to, what's it called? Make people feel guilty. Shame us. Yeah, shame. Stop trying to shame people for not voting. Stop vote shame. It ain't gonna work. I'm, I'm never gonna feel bad about it. I feel wonderful. No. All right. When all else fails, vote from the rooftops. Okay, whatever, honey. Anyway, is there anything else you wanted to add? That was, that was my closing statement. Okay. Okay, um, you guys have a great rest of your afternoon. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.